You guys ready for round two? Locked and loaded. Ready? All right, let's do it. Welcome to the new show Music for Muggles. This show will teach you how to listen to classical music through several easy steps. Today we're going to be dealing with the most basic piece structure, which is actually the foundation for almost every instrumental piece that was written between the late 1700s and the year 1900. You mean to tell me that there's one kind of piece that can explain everything that any composer wrote for almost 150 years? Absolutely! This piece structure is actually called binary form, and almost every instrumental piece during those 150 years were actually just a larger version of it. Sounds too complicated for me. That's just it. It's simple and easy to understand. I don't believe you. Okay, so let's start with something other than music. Have you ever heard of a couplet? You mean like, true wit is nature to advantage dressed what oft was thought but never so well expressed? Absolutely. A couplet is just two lines of rhymed poetry. In music, we have something just like it called a period. Steve, why don't you show us some famous periods? Sure. So musical period is just a complete musical idea usually made up of two parts. The first part, called the antecedent, sets up the idea. Let's hear some famous antecedents. Now many of you probably recognized these tunes and saw that they weren't complete. That's because they were missing the second half, called the consequent. Let's hear them all again, with the consequent. Those still didn't sound finished. I know how they all end. If they're a complete period, why don't they sound like a complete idea? That's actually a really good question, and the answer is pretty simple. How many couplets do you know of that are actually complete poems in just two lines? I guess that's the only one. Good, so what do poets do if they want to write a short poem in couplet format? I guess they'll just write another couplet to go along with it? Right, so the same thing happens in music. Usually composers will write what I like to call false starts, which is where they'll start a musical idea, but it won't end correctly in the consequent, so they'll start over from the beginning again and end in a way that sounds final. Let's listen to the examples we already heard more closely and see how this works. So, we'll have period number one in Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then we'll start over again from the beginning and end it correctly. Same thing with the minuet from Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. the second start. Okay, I think I get it. So the composer will write something, but it won't end quite right. Like, oh, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I truly like to be. But, because it's not complete, they feel like they have to explain themselves a little further. For if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone would be in love with me. Precisely. A lot of commercial ditties actually use periods for a short, memorable song. But that's not where binary form ends. You mean there's more? Yep. I don't think I'm ready for this. 
So earlier we were talking about poetry. Now you remember your high school English class, you probably talked a little bit about limericks. You mean like there once was a man from Nantucket who's- Yeah, 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 I like that one. But since this is a family show, let's pick something a little different. Okay, fine. So what about the one about the tutor who tooted the flute? Perfect. A tutor who tooted the flute tried to tutor two tutors to toot. Said the toot to their tutor, is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? Now this poem has a pretty standard rhyme scheme. A-A-B-B-A. So the first, second, and fifth lines all have the same number of syllables and rhyme at the end, but the third and fourth lines are shorter and have a different rhyme. So what does that have to do with music? Steve, you want to take this one? Sure. Well, in binary form, the second half of the piece is just like the third, fourth, and fifth lines of a limerick. Simply put, something different happens, called the digression, that leads back to something that already happened at the beginning of the piece. I still don't think I get it. Well, let's talk through some examples. So in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, we'll have something different. And then a return of the material. Same thing with the Minuetto from Mozart. and then a return of the original. Oh, that makes so much sense now. So when we hear a binary piece, we'll hear a period and then a digression and then a return. Exactly! So what composers did was to play the first half of the piece, also known as the presentation, twice, and then they'd play the second half of the piece twice. This makes two halves of the piece, which is why it's called binary! That's so simple! Good! And I hope it made sense to you too, but if it didn't, don't fret. Either way, the best thing you can do for yourself is to listen to a lot of pieces using this form. Fortunately for you, I've included a lot of links in the sidebar to great examples. Sing yourself the tunes and ask yourself, have I heard this yet? You'll start to realize you can remember and recognize them when themes return, and this will give you a sense of structure in the piece. In the next episode, we'll be studying minuets. I've included a few minuets in the sidebar, and you've already heard one today. When you listen to them, ask yourself how it sounds like what we heard today, and think about how it's different. Try and figure out the structure of a minuet on your own if you can, and you'll see how close you got next time. Thanks for watching, and remember, Listening to classical music doesn't have to be as difficult as you think.